Hello there. Welcome back to the Bedtime with Cousin Vinny series exclusively on YouTube. We're reading my critically acclaimed novel, The Devil's Glove, raved about all over the nation, as you know, if you've done a Google search on it. And um, we're going to read about 180 pages, not all tonight, but uh, it's going to be one of the world's great teases. And of course, at the end, we're going to give you a chance to be able to purchase the book for a reasonable price, have it autographed, so that you can enjoy the magic of the Devil's Glove that I'm about to present to you tonight. We left uh, off last time, I guess on page 51. Uh, Eddie and his dad were at the baseball card show, and uh, here we go, the Devil's Glove. Well, your grandfather for Christmas that year gave me a baseball card locker to store my cards in, and I had so many cards that they all didn't fit properly. Well, anyway, it was such a tight fit that I ended up bending them all up, trying to get them into that locker. Years later, I find out that I wrecked the card's value by blunting their edges and storing them like that. That's right! Cards lose their value when you bend their edges. Boy, Dad, you were a complete moron, weren't you? Eddie emphasized the obvious, breaking out into a laughing fit. It's Mr. Moron to you, wise guy. Seriously, though, like I said before, if only I knew. What a dunce. Glad I didn't grow up back then. The music was lame, too, <laughs> Eddie snickered. Someday your kids will be telling you the same thing. No way, Jose. And he immediately started to fidget a bit while waiting in line, shifting his weight from foot to foot. And he anxiously awaited further chit-chat from his father and, losing his patience, initiated a line of conversation. Dad, who do you think was better, Babe Ruth or Hank Aaron? Well, Eddie, I got to see Hank play uh, when I was a kid, and he was a real good ball player. I never got to see the Babe. He was quite a bit before my time. But from what I've heard, the Babe was a much better hitter. Let's just put it this way. He got his 714 home runs and a couple thousand less at bats than Hank Aaron did. So Babe Ruth was the best, Eddie announced. The line had moved ahead considerably and the two were now waiting near the display cases. Eddie eagerly looked over the different baseball cards contained within the display. His eyes were firmly focused on a Babe Ruth card. Dad, look! They got a Babe Ruth card in there! I wonder what it costs! Forget the cost, kid. You ain't getting a card. What? You think your old man is made of money? No, I just wanted to know what it costs. Too much. Eddie continued to look into the display case and focused in on a card that lay next to the Ruth card. Dad, who's Lou Gehrig? Well, Eddie, I can tell you a little bit about him, but again, he was way before my time. They have a movie about him called The Pride of the Yankees. He was the captain of the New York Yankees, and he played alongside Babe Ruth. From what I hear, he was an amazing hitter. He hit a lot of home runs and had a real high batting average, too. He played in more consecutive games than any other player in the history of the game, and that's how he got his nickname, The Iron Horse. But his career was shortened because he got a terrible disease, Eddie, and uh, he died at a young age. How old was he? I think around 40. That's really sad, Dad. That's about your age. Hope nothing like that happens to you. Guess I'll have to watch that movie. It's a real tearjerker, kid, but I'll rent it for you. And don't worry about your old man. I'll be here to keep you on your toes for a long, long time. What about poor shoeless Joe Jackson? That was mean what they did to him in that movie. That happened to him in real life, Eddie. That movie Eight Men Out was a depiction of what really happened to the 1919 Chicago White Sox. You mean they really threw him out even though he never threw a game? Eddie asked in disbelief. Yes. But that's not fair. Do you think he plays baseball in heaven, like in Field of Dreams? If I remember correctly, they were supposedly playing in Iowa, 
They just thought it was heaven. Okay, but do you think he's playing in heaven? And he anxiously demanded an answer. Yes, I'm sure of it. Good. Because that's only fair. Do you think we're ever going to get to the front of the line? One of these years, my boy. Mr. Romano gazed over a display that contained a lot of cassette tapes. These were authentic recordings and interviews of players and events from Major League Baseball's past. The display sat on top of a glass chest that all had to pass on their way to Ryan Sandberg's table. Hey, look what they got here, Eddie. What, Dad? They got original recordings of a couple of the ball players we were talking about. Who, Dad? Well, they got the babe talking baseball. And look, that's Lou Gehrig's farewell speech from Yankee Stadium. Uh, how'd you like to have those, Eddie? Wow! Yeah! Please, Dad! Your wish is my command, Mr. Romano said, trying his best to imitate the genie from Aladdin's lamp. Thanks, Dad, but do me a favor. Don't quit your day job, okay, Eddie Wisecraft? Mr. Romano waved at the clerk and got his attention. I figured as long as uh, we're going to be waiting here in this line, we might as well do a little business. Just these two, sir? Yep. How much longer do you think we've got? The line seems to be moving pretty quickly now. A few minutes at the most, stated the clerk. Eddie will be up there in no time. Mr. Romano yawned in boredom as he handed Eddie the cassettes. Thanks again, Dad. Can't wait to get home to listen to these. I've heard that Lou Gehrig recording before. It's quite a speech. He tells the crowd that he feels like he's the luckiest man on the planet, even though he's very, very ill. He, he looked lost in thought for a moment before he snapped back to himself. Well, that's depressing. Let's get on to a more uplifting topic. Are, uh, are we going to go see the White Sox play again this year? You bet we are. Boy, didn't we have a lot of fun last year? That Jack McDowell is becoming some kind of pitcher, huh, Dad? Yes, indeed, Mr. Romano responded rather absently. He wistfully added, You know, Eddie, it's going to be strange going to that new ballpark this year. I had a lot of great times in that old one. A lot of memories are dying with that old ballpark. That's right, they're tearing the old ballpark down. I forgot all about that, Dad. Incredible. They're supposedly making it into a parking lot. I heard on the news that they began tearing it down earlier this week. Dad, do they wreck ballparks on Sundays? Nope. I don't think so, my boy. Sunday is a day of rest, except for those who like to wait in lines at baseball card shows. Mr. Romano answered facetiously. I'll betcha that there's a lot of great souvenirs to be found at that old ballpark. Probably, my boy. I mean, hell, they've been uh, playing there for ages. Why wouldn't there be? Well, if they're not working today, I don't know why we can't go down there and hunt for some souvenirs. I'll tell you why not. Because construction sites are dangerous, Eddie. Live a little, will ya? There's still plenty of daylight left, and I'm sure we'll be careful. Never know what we might find, Dad. Eddie, that's out of the question. It's also against the law. I won't tell if you don't tell, Dad. Come on, Dad. This is a chance of a lifetime. I mean, Dad, how many times do they wreck famous ballparks? Not often, Eddie, but please, Dad, I promise I'll be real careful. It will be so much fun. We can go on our first great adventure together. Please, Eddie begged. Why do you have to do this to me? I knew I should never have brought that up. Damn it, Eddie. You're a pain in the ass, you know that? But that's why you love me so much, Eddie said affectionately. Well, I'm not promising any, you anything except that we'll go down there and check it out. If it looks too dangerous, we're not going to go hunting around. Understand, kid? Yes, Dad. I knew you'd see it my way. That's why I tell all the kids in the neighborhood that I've got the coolest father ever, Eddie flattered. Don't be a smartass. 
Now go get your autograph and let's get out of here. Eddie walked over and shook hands with Ryan Sandberg. And despite the fact that he was a Chicago Cub and Eddie an avid White Sox fan, he was elated to have him autograph his baseball glove. Mr. Romano was amazed to find out that there was no price tag involved for the transaction. Eddie turned back toward his, toward his father gleefully and said, Let's go! End of chapter. New chapter. Finding a Souvenir. The Romano's Toyota Corolla sedan pulled up alongside the curb near where Comiskey Park used to be. The old ballpark was no longer recognizable. Wrecking balls had literally pounded the infrastructure into the ground. Both Romanos exited the car and stared into disbelief at what used to be a ballpark. What was left reminded Mr. Romano of pictures he had seen of Germany after World War II. All of what used to be was just a memory now. Surrounding the wrecking site were long sawhorse-like blockades that were put up by the police department to discourage trespassers. The area was covered with yellow plastic tape strips that warned trespassers of imminent danger. You really want to go through with this, Mr. Romano asked? Come on, Dad. Sometimes you gotta break the rules. I suppose, but if it looks too, too hazardous, we're going back, understand? Sure, Dad, Eddie said, unconvinced. I can't believe I let you talk me into this. I feel like I'm the 11-year-old. Who's the adult here, anyway? You are, Dad. Come on, it's going to be fun, coaxed Eddie. On that note, the two climbed over the barriers and entered the forbidden zone. The two carefully navigated their way through the wreckage. The path that they walked along was shaded by the remnants of the once proud stadium. Mr. Romano didn't understand it, but as he progressed, he felt that forgotten but once familiar childhood rush. He was actually breaking the rules and he felt good about it. He reminisced back to his childhood when he and his friends used to explore the sewers in his hometown. He recalled how he used to spend entire afternoons walking through drainage pipes in search of treasures like dead animals or other such notable things of interest to young boys. He couldn't believe that he was actively participating alongside his son on one of these great adventures. He kept asking himself, how old are you? He shook his head in amazement when he pondered the thought of being the thought father of an 11-year-old boy. How time had flown by was the predominant thought on his mind during this adventure. The two continued farther into the wreckage and Eddie spotted a baseball wedged underneath a couple of wooden boards. Dad, look, it's a baseball. I told you that this trip would, would be worth it, didn't I? You sure did, my boy, he said, totally amused by Eddie's childish antics. Eddie grabbed the mostly white baseball and quickly rubbed the dirt off of it. I wonder what year this ball's from. I don't know, Eddie. Despite popular opinion, even I don't have all the answers. To me, old baseballs look pretty much the same. The two then continued on with their exploration. Their path was impeded by an earth-moving machine. This piece of heavy equipment was left in the middle of the wreckage by the workers who presumably would continue their excavation on Monday. As the Romano du duo circumvented the earth mover, Eddie noticed that the earth mover's shovel had broken the ground. Eddie peered down into the hole the earth mover had created and something green caught his eye. This was something unusual. Dad, what the heck is that? Eddie asked, pointing down into the hole at the green object. I don't know. Here, let me help you. You go down there and take a look. Dad, it's kind of steep. Well, I'm certainly not going down there. So if you want to find out for yourself, I'll give you a hand. Other than that, let's keep on moving. Hold on, I'm going. Mr. Romano made a loud sigh and then held both of Eddie's arms. As he lowered him down into the hole, Eddie was relieved when his feet finally hit the ground. Dad, move. 
You're blocking my light. Mr. Romano stepped away from the hole, and Eddie knelt down by the green object. As he touched it, he immediately recognized the leather texture. Instantaneously, he dug it out with his hands. He looked it over in amazement. Dad, it's some kind of fancy baseball glove. You should see it. It's really cool. It has all kinds of fancy artwork on it. Well, bring it up and let me take a look at it. Mr. Romano reached his hand down in the hole and Eddie grasped onto it. Mr. Romano proceeded to pull Eddie up and out of the ditch. Let me take a look at that, Mr. Romano demanded while taking the green infielder's glove from Eddie. Wow, Eddie, 